So the solid steel shaft DF has a diameter of 25mm and is supported by smooth bearings at D and E. It is coupled to a motor at F which delivers 12 kilowatts of power to the shaft while it's turning at 50 revs per second. And if gears A, B and C remove 3, 4 and 5 kilowatts respectively, we need to determine the maximum shear stress developed in the shaft and it's within two specific regions, so C, F and B, C. So that's going to represent this section and uh, this section here. So we're told that the shaft is free to turn in its support bearings uh, D and E. All right, and we could have kind of inferred that from back up at the beginning where it told us that these were smooth bearings. That's trying to tell us that there's no resistance, so no torque lost um, through these uh, components. All right, so let's have a think about the equations that we're going to need. Um, and we're specifically asked to find the maximum shear stress. So the equation for shear stress, tau, uh, we can calculate it with TR over J, where T is torque, R is distance from the centroid, and J is the polar moment of inertia associated with your cross-section. So we're not just asked for any shear stress, we're asked for the maximum. So I'm going to pop in here uh, tau max to remind us of that, and I'm going to put the subscripts on here as well. So we want the maximum torque experienced within the shaft, the maximum distance we can get from the centroid. And for this J value, since it's associated with the cross section and it's got a constant cross section the whole way through, it's always going to be the same value. So I'll just leave it as that constant J. So I'm going to start with trying to find the maximum uh, torque experienced by the shaft. And in order to do that, we're going to need to uh, convert the information we're given around the power uh, usage through each of these components and the speed that the shaft is spinning at uh, in order to convert, convert into a torque. Okay, so once we've got torque measurements, we should then be able to use that to find this maximum value. So the equation that we're going to need to rely on is that power is equal to torque times angular velocity, which is this omega or W looking thing. So if we're interested in the torque, we should be able to rearrange the equation to get that it's equal to the power divided by the angular velocity. Now we have the power for each of our components, that's fine. Angular velocity we kind of have. At the moment it's in the units of revs per second or cycles per second. And what we need it to be in is the base units for um, angular velocity here are radians per second. So we need to perform a conversion, and I'll just pop that over to the side here. So omega is equal to 2 pi f, okay, where f is the frequency, and our frequency is 50 revs per second. So all we need to do is take 2 pi and multiply it by this 50, okay, and that's going to give us 100 pi, and the units for that would be radians per second. Now just watch out, sometimes speeds are given in revs per minute or RPM, in which case you need to convert it into revs per second, okay, before you substitute in here. Uh, otherwise you're going to get rads per minute rather than rads per second. So we've got this all figured out now, so all we've got to do is convert each of these components uh, into a torque um, that is um, across that component. So I might start with this uh, gear here that's got 3 kilowatts. So I'll pop here gear A. So um, torque is going to be equal to the power, which is the 3 kilowatts. And I'm going to put it in base units, which means I need to multiply by 1,000. And divided by our 100 pi, uh, the rate it's spinning at. So when you do that, uh, you end up with 9.55 newton meters okay, for the torque across the component. If we move on to the next one, which is gear B, and repeat the calculation, so this time it's going to be 4,000 divided by 100 pi. Uh, this is going to work out to 12.73. And we've got one last gear to do this for. You see? So 5,000 divided by 100 pi. Uh, this one is 15.92 in newton meters. So the last one is that we just need to convert the uh, motor. So its torque is going to be 12,000 on 100 pi and this one works out to 38.20 in newton meters. Alright, so now that we know the torque that is at each of these different points, I'm going to construct a free body diagram and then can turn it into a torque diagram um, to find the internal torque. 
So let's start with the free body diagram of our situation. So I'm isolating just the shaft from everything else here, right? And we're just going to draw in the torques. So we've got a, we'll start with the motor, a torque applied at the motor, right? And that's going to be in a particular direction. Uh, I'm going to go with this way. Now it doesn't really matter which way we assume, okay? Because basically we're going to have one direction that the torque is applied through the motor. And then it, since we're kind of losing the torque or using the torque across these components, it's going to be in the opposite direction. So that means the torque here uh, at this point F would be the 38... 0.20. If we move on to the next component, so this is the one at gear C, it's going to be this torque, and since it's um, being used, it's going to be in the opposite direction. So this will be the 15.92 newton meters. Next, we've got the one at B. Okay, this is the 12.73, uh, same direction as the other year, other gear, sorry, because it's being used. Okay, and we have one left. All right, this is the 9.55. Again, same direction because it's being used. Um, so 9.55 Newton meters. All right, so now what we want to do is convert this into a torque diagram. And the units for this diagram are going to be Newton meters. So I'll draw my axis. And I'm going to assume, let's go with this way is the positive direction. Okay, so as we draw the diagram, anything that's drawn in this direction will be considered positive and anything that's drawn in the other direction will be considered negative. So we know that we start the diagram at zero and at the beginning there's nothing happening. So we're just going to sit along the axis. We then hit this 9.55 Newton meters and it's in the positive direction. So it's going to drag us up. If we keep going along, there's nothing happening through here until we hit the next uh, torque that's applied, which is 12.73. So we're going to go up that amount. So that makes for a total of 22.58, uh, sorry, 0.28 overall. All right, so we keep going along, um, nothing happening until we hit the 15.92. And again, that's going to take us upwards. So 22.28 plus the 15.92, that takes us to uh, 38.20 overall. So again, nothing happens until we hit the end where this final uh, torque is applied. And this is in the opposite direction, so it's going to take us downwards. And 38.20 minus 38.20 takes us back to zero. So we have our diagram starting and ending at zero, which is what we were expecting. Now what we were looking for is the maximum torque that we could get. And for this um, specific question, we were asked for the, the, to look in two specific regions. So we're looking in the region of CF and also in the region of BC. So if I go through and actually label my points, so A, B and C are where the three torques are applied. So that would be like, oop, undo, like A, B and C. And then this point on the end was F. Okay, where the motor was connected. So we're looking for the maximum torque in this section and this section. And we can see it's actually just a constant value from our diagram. So for section BC, all right, T max is going to be this 28, sorry, 22.28 in Newton meters. And for this other section, um, CF, T max is 38.20. Now I should emphasize you could get these values um, by actually performing cuts through your diagram um, and solving for the internal torque at those two different cuts. Okay, otherwise I think this is a bit more efficient because um, you can get all of the torques kind of at the same time. All right, so going back up to our equation, uh, the next thing I'm going to look for is R max and J and these are going to come from looking at the cross section. Okay, and we're told that we have a solid shaft that's got a diameter of 25 millimeters. So let me just do a sketch of that. So it's circle and the diameter here is 25 millimeters. So if I mark in the centroid, which should be at the center of the circle, we can start with R max. That's the uh, biggest distance we can possibly get away from the centroid while actually still sitting on the cross section. 
So I would suggest that the furthest distance we can get is going to be at the outer uh, surface. Okay, anywhere on it, it's going to be the same value. So therefore, R max is going to be, if the diameter is 25, it's going to be half of that. So 12.5 um, millimeters. So the other thing we needed was the J value, which is our polar moment of inertia. And we can look up uh, tables in order to find uh, the equation based on the cross section. And if you go and look up a table for just uh, a circle, the equation for J is pi on 2, uh, r to the power of 4, where r is the radius of your cross section. So we can substitute in our radius. It's going to be the same as um, r max. And I'm going to put it into um, meters, so 0 0.0125. And this becomes 3.83 by 10 to the negative 8, and the units are going to be meters to the power of 4. So all that we've got left now is to substitute back into our equation, okay? And just remembering that for these two different sections, we have different torques, so we'll need to pick them up. But otherwise, the cross section is the same no matter where you sit on the shaft. So we're going to substitute in to this equation. Um, let's start with the section ooh, BC. So the maximum torque experienced is equal to the, uh, so, sorry, the maximum shear stress is equal to the maximum torque experienced, which is 22.28. Multiplied by the maximum radius we can experience, oh, that was here, the 12.5. And watching units, I'm going to put everything into base. So this should be by 10 to the negative 3. And then we need to divide by the J value, which is about 3.83 by 10 to the negative 8. So when you pop this into a calculator, it comes out as 7.26 by 10 to the 6. And since everything was in base units, it's going to come out in pascals. And it's a rather large number. So if we divide by 10 to the power of 6 to put it into megapascals, we're going to have 7.26 for the answer. So we'll do the other section now. And that was the CF section. Following the same procedure, we need to draw in the correct um, torque, and the maximum torque for that section was 38.20, um, and the R and the J were the same since we have the same size shaft and same shape shaft. So when you pop this into a calculator, uh, it comes out as 1.25 by 10 to the power of 7, again the answer. Uh, answer will fall out in pascals since we converted everything to base. And if you convert into megapascals then, dividing by 10 to the power of 6, we end up with 12.5 megapascals for the answer. So that's all there is in terms of this question.